Hi everyone. Good morning. Hope you are doing fine. Today we will be starting the second chapter in continuation with the first one where we have already discussed about the layer and the channel relationship. Today we will be focusing on the physical resource or which is normally called the physical resource block in LT. Those are the physical resource. Through the physical resource we normally can understand what is the capacity of our LT network that has been deployed or about to be deployed. So normally here I have drawn a small table which talks about the spectrum and the available resource block and how that much resource block we are getting and how we are using that that we will see. So for 1.4 megahertz spectrum we are having 6 resource block which you can utilize for 3 megahertz we are having 15, for 5 megahertz 25 resource block, 20, 10 megahertz 50 resource block, 15 megahertz 75 and for 20 megahertz we can have hundreds of resource blocks. So resource block determine the capacity or which is a capacity allocation unit. So that's all about the resource block. So resource block are basically the physical layer entities or you know we can understand so these are the capacity allocation units in LT like we are having time slots in 2Z and codes in 3Z so here the capacity determined by the number of resource block and we already discussed how many resource block for each spectrum allocated to us. In FDD we have both 20 megahertz in downlink and uplink so we have 100 resource block in downlink and uplink but for TDD let's say we are having 20 resource a 20 megahertz spectrum we are having maximum 100 number of resource block in total wherein we are having uplink frames downlink frames special subframes so uh, that is all and that's the difference between the TDD and FDD because in TDD we are having two different band one band for downlink, one band for uplink but in TDD just one band which we say between uplink and downlink transmission plus special subframe to distinguish between downlink transmission and then uplink transmission so between downlink and uplink transmission we, we use a special subframe in TDD so moving on to radio frame in TDD and FDD this frame structure is the same only difference in FDD we have downlink frames and uplink frames in TDD we share the same band of frequency so how the frame structure looks like this is one radio frame I have drawn here which is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 subframes so this is one subframe this one which I have elaborated here how does one subframe looks like in a normal cyclic prefix prefix condition so one radio frame is 10 millisecond long and divided into 10 subframes having 1 millisecond length or one subframe is 1 millisecond long and then we talk about a slot slot is normally one subframe is divided into two slots 0.5 millisecond each so I think it's clear one radio frame 10 millisecond long divided into 10 subframes so each subframe 1 millisecond long again each subframe divided into two slots each having 0.5 millisecond length so this is one slot, this is one slot, totally this is one frame. I think it's clear. Now moving on to the symbol timings. If we are using normal cyclic prefix in our network, then we are having seven symbols, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in one slot. This is one slot, this to this, and this one subframe is the total subframe. So as I told if you are using normal cyclic prefix, this is a normal cyclic prefix condition. I have taken 1.4 megahertz spectrum as an example. 
Okay, I'll do that side. So this is total 1.4 megahertz and these are one month subcarriers. This guy, 15 kilohertz each. So 15 into 12 is 180 kilohertz. This is 180 kilohertz like this much. This and this. This is total 180 kilohertz in frequency domain and 1 millisecond in time domain. So this is I have run 1.4 megahertz spectrum having 6 resource block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and this is just 1 TTI, 1 transmission time interval or 1 millisecond and these are all the subcarriers in a 1.4 megahertz 6 resource block condition like 12 into 15 kilohertz like 180, 180 into 6 so that much allocated for user utilization we were uh, excluding the guard bands in both the sides so out of 1.4 megahertz we can use this much for the users let's see what is next so as I told I will repeat again please pay attention this is very important uh, chapter one radio frame consists of 10 subframes and 10 millisecond long every 1 millisecond or one subframe divided into two slots. Every slot divided into seven symbols if we are using normal cyclic prefix. In case of extended cyclic prefix, six symbols only. No seven, only one to six. So why we use normal and extended? Extended cyclic prefix gives us a robust uh, you know, uh, technique towards uh, inter-symbol interference due to multipath one symbol timing you know uh, overlap to the other one or the data and everything so if we have some extended cyclic prefix you can have a better counter uh, you can say technique to count you know uh, you know address this inter symbol interference so that we'll see in the different chapter because cyclic prefix is something uh, we need to see in uh, in an elaborate manner today we are just focusing on the resource side of the physical resources so this is one symbol sorry one slot and one carrier 180 kilohertz so this to this is 180 kilohertz this to this okay and in time domain it is 0.5 millisecond so in normal cyclic prefix we are having 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 7 into 12 subcarriers is 7 into 12 equal to 84 resource elements. What is a resource element? This one smallest unit. You can take this one. This is one resource element. One resource element is the smallest unit theoretically which is allocated for any user. Now what is one resource element. One resource element is nothing but one modulation symbol. Depends on what kind of modulation we are using for that scheduling block or resource block or for that particular subcarrier. So let's take the example of QPSK, 16 qualm, 64 qualm and BPSK. For BPSK, this is one bit per symbol. For QPSK, two bits per symbol per resource element. For 16 qualm, we are having 4 bits per symbol and for 64 qualm 6 bits. So if no MIMO is used for one scheduling block, one scheduling block is two consecutive resource block which is allocated by the scheduler. This is the minimum allocation done by scheduler every one millisecond. So this is one millisecond length, two resource block as I told here, slot one, slot two, collectively they are one subframe one millisecond length so user 2 user 1 allocated these four resource blocks user 2 allocated this two resource block or one scheduling block this is called one scheduling block because there are two consecutive resource blocks this you can take as one scheduling block user 3 all other so I have taken just one example wherein our bandwidth is 1.4 megahertz so we are having six resource block per the bandwidth and consecutive two resource block because we are taking two slots as an example and one scheduling block. 
So that is how our results are allocated every transmission time interval or every TTI by the scheduler. So when talking about the capacity, I'll show you a small calculation. Later on, we'll see how the throughput is calculated. Let's say I'm having best radio condition and I'm uh, implementing 64 pound. So per symbol, how much bits I have? How much you know modulation uh, bits? For one resource element, if I am having 64 pound with best radio condition, I am having 6 bits per symbol. So 84 resource elements in one resource block into 2 is total resource elements in one scheduling block in one TTI and into 6 bits per symbol. So it would be around 84 into 12. thousand eight bits okay it is, it is just an uh, you know average number or average calculation may not be exactly thousand bits or thousand eight bits so if i'm having best radio condition without my mo and transmitting in one millisecond in one scheduling block thousand eight bits of information or data so that is how the physical resource uh, is uh, you know explained in LTE, TDD and FDD mode. One more thing, here I have drawn the 20 slot timing in one radio frame, slot 1 till slot 20. So I hope you really enjoyed and understood the sessions about all the physical resources. That is one, we learn the radio frame, which is a 10 millisecond long and uh, contains 10 subframes in it. Second is the radio subframe, which is 1 millisecond long and which contains 2 slots in it. Third is 1 slot, 1 slot is nothing but 0.5 millisecond long and 180 kilohertz is the frequency domain uh, spacing. So 100 kilohertz consists of 12 subcarriers, 15 kilohertz each. And what is one symbol? Like one uh, resource element, it is one symbol in the time domain, one symbol time in the time domain and one subcarrier, 15 kilohertz in the frequency domain. What is one scheduling block? It is two consecutive resource block. Why scheduling block is used? Because the scheduler sends one minimum one scheduling block data to users arch for the allocation uh, procedure. So here I have written that scheduling block is the smallest resource unit a scheduler can assign to a user. So two consecutive resource block is called one scheduling block. We understood the resource block. Resource block is nothing but 12 subcarrier in the frequency domain and 0.5 millisecond or one slot timing in the time domain. So that's the resource block. We understood normal cyclic prefix and extended cyclic prefix. Here this case is an example of normal cyclic prefix where in one resource block we are using seven symbols. So in one scheduling block, 14 symbols in the time domain and as usual 12 subcarriers in the frequency domain. So those are all the understanding and how the allocation is done. We have taken 1.4 megahertz spectrum as an example. So this is 1.4 megahertz having 6 resource block or 6 180 kilohertz carriers which is again divided into 12 sub carriers per resource block and this is how allocation is done by the scheduler. User 1, this 4 resource block or 2 scheduling block user 2 one scheduling block this is one scheduling block user 3 this much i've just taken an example and we see how much resource block for every frequency band that is 1.4 year we are getting six resource blocks 3 megahertz 15 5 25 10 50 resource block 15 75 resource block and for 20 megahertz we are getting 100 resource block we understood that just 20 megahertz band for both uplink and downlink allocations along with the spe uh, special subframe but in uh, that is a TDD.
For FDD, we are having two different frequency bands, one for downlink, one for uplink, each having 20 MHz band. So for uplink and downlink, we are having 100 resource block each for uplink and downlink. So that's the difference between FDD and TDD, otherwise rest of the things are the same. And one more thing, we use the special subframe in the TDD. That we'll see later. So this is all about the physical resource of the LG system in both TDD and FDD mode. I think uh, that's all for today's session. We'll be coming up with the third chapter, which is nothing but time structure of FDD mode and then we'll see the time structure of TDD mode. So thank you so much. Do keep in touch, like and share the videos, comment if you like and subscribe if you are not subscribed yet just below the video that red subscribe button click on that and if you want to get notifications so click on the bell button just near that subscribe button right hand side to your right hand side of the subscribe button thank you so much take care bye bye